Hey there, hunters. So today I want to talk about the current going ons with the speedrunning scene in Monster Hunter and my thoughts on it and kind of so on. So for the most part, I don't really talk about my thoughts and opinions about Monster Hunter because it mostly comes off as negative. Not because I don't like the game. I mean, come on, I wouldn't be dropping thousands of hours into a game I didn't like. It's because I feel there are easy fixes to the game's issues that would make the overall experience so much better. And it's just a way of venting my frustration. But I'm going to be starting to let that out of it. So these next few videos might just be me complaining a lot, in which case I'm sorry, but I hope there's enough information and context to justify it a little bit or at least give you an idea of where I'm coming from. Starting with the topic of speedrunning and why it's become so lackluster to me and why I'm bored of it. First is that I never did speedruns for any sort of glory or fame. I know it's kind of why a lot of people do it and there are entire teams and channels dedicated to it, but for me personally, I've always just tried to make guides and information first and then I would use speedrunning to back up what I preach. Anyone can make a video saying, hey, this is the best set for this weapon, but they never put it into practice. And there are so many variables that have to be included into sets and using them on an actual monster that it doesn't really do anyone any good just to say, yeah, this is the best thing on paper because best on paper rarely translates into best in practice. Now, I've been speedrunning since generations, though I've never had a capture card on my 3DS, so I couldn't really make anything into a world, which is kind of where I started making videos. But even back then, I always did speedrunning to put theory into practice, and I did try to write guides and stuff back on the Reddit way back in the day. I never posted any of my runs to any leaderboards anywhere, ever. Mostly because when I was running back in generations, the TA Wiki didn't allow runs posted from non-Japanese games, which is super racist by the way. So even when they were allowing English runs in World, I was pretty salty about that and it's just never posted anything there. It was all fine as, again, I was just wanting to show that I could practice what I preach. I ultimately just wanted to make these guides and show people how to use guns, as there was relatively no information covered by the popular YouTubers at the time. So that's kind of my origins with speedrunning and stuff. Sorry, kind of a waste of time, but I felt it necessary. But let's get into Rise running, and I'll start with the basic rule sets. As it stands, Rise has, I don't know, like nine different rule sets, all created by different people. I think the Tia Wiki has like three now. The Monster Hunter speedrun leaderboards has one. I think TDS is making one. I don't know. There's just a lot of rule sets that all include or disclude something different, and it's kind of getting annoying. Back in World, we had two rule sets. TA rules that would disallow pets, traps, captures, bombs, and unavoidable environmental hazards. And then we had freestyle, which is just anything goes. Before World, it was basically still just that, but it was more of a TA versus heroics run. It was pretty easy to follow. But now in Rise, due to RNG being absurd with charms and now armor augments, there are rule sets that include or exclude armor augments, charms, a mix of the two, all stacked on top of that TA versus freestyle like foundation. It's spreading the categories far too thin and making just keeping track of them just annoying. This is not at all the fault of any player. For the most part, it's just due to the RNG systems we have in the game and people not wanting to deal with it. I've always been on the side of just use whatever the game has to offer, and yes, I modded my charms and stuff because I ain't dealing with that sort of RNG, but also because I feel like god tier charms and stuff are the only way to make a level playing field for runners. You can either go no charms or min max charms, and each have their pros and cons. For going like the god charm route, it means that everyone has the best. They can all build the best sets around the best possible setup imaginable. There aren't any limitations as far as what the game actually imposes. The downsides is that you do need a modder game to be competitive, and this does not exclude Switch versions because we were doing that just fine on the Switch too. I just know how some people feel about it and it's totally understandable not wanting to use god charms and stuff or not wanting to alter your game. 100% get it. For running without charms, again it is another way to level the playing field, but sadly a lot of weapons have a skill tax as Sarah put it that are required to make the weapons play well enough. So excluding charms would make some weapons worse than usual because they just can't fit enough skills on their sets anymore, because charms do provide a lot. Which as a gunner, I don't like because, you know, we need a ton of skills as well, like spare shot up, ammo up, shot type up, rapid fire, mighty bow, just to start like your set. And then of course there's that middle ground, the normie route, of just use whatever you get, and that's kind of dumb too, because then you're just saying that you can't be competitive unless you have better RNGs than someone else, because some people just don't get any decent charms. And then at that point, you might as well not be running charms at all. And also, grinding mindlessly with Rajang resets to farm charms is super annoying, and that's not fun, so I don't like that approach either. 
What I'm getting at though is that there is no clear way to balance the entry to speedrunning, as many people just have different beliefs and ideals, so there's never going to be an agreement towards a standardized rule set anymore. So while it doesn't affect me too much, because again, it's just I just did stuff to prove things, it's just kind of a downer. Like I always played the TA rule set because it was just a you and your weapon kind of thing, and it just got to showcase the strength of the weapon itself, and it was a good way to gauge how effective weapons are. Freestyle to me is kind of a joke, at least in World and Rise, because the monsters basically don't get to move or react. For the most part, monsters are just locked down with traps and statuses, and they just die. There's no gameplay there, so I've always stuck to TA. But now there's just a bunch of TA categories, and I just I don't want to bother anymore. It's splintering up all the speedrunners, and it just feels like everyone's playing in their own category at this point. The next thing I want to talk about is modding. Again, not a PC exclusive thing, console versions definitely get modded too. World speedrunning started out great because the modding scene was pretty limited to just the quality of life mods, which even then people didn't like. Stuff like lowest legal HP roll so we didn't have to force weakener every time, or locked monster spawn so we didn't have to keep resetting until it spawned where we wanted it to. I don't see any problem with mods like that. And for the most part, World had a pretty healthy speedrun scene for all throughout base world, and it was pretty good times. There was some heated discussion regarding overlays, but honestly that was pretty folly as you can never really tell if someone was using an overlay or not, so it was just more up to an honor system at that point. Side note, that's actually why I like Rise overlays, because it's in engine and you can see that it's active, and all I ever wanted was that clock, so that's cool. But by the time Iceborne was out, like, the modding scene got really kinda too crazy. Like, we had all sorts of runs with cheated quests that had lower monster HPs, people hiding damage numbers or hiding their openers, Mods that changed pet AI to always use the horn for the cat. Mods that changed the monster AI so they won't do specific attack. Uh, just, you know, stuff that would allow you to macro in, ledge jumping cancels, all that stuff. Like, it really snowballed out of control. I stopped speedrunning in World Around the Latreon because it just got too crazy. Everything was cheated, thought to be cheated, or bad because it wasn't as good as the cheated runs. And most normal people didn't really care. They couldn't spot it, they couldn't tell, they just, you know, accepted everything. And honestly, all that just kind of drove me away. There was just too much nonsense and bad sportsmanship in the speedrunning community at that point, so I kind of stepped back. Now, Rise really doesn't have this issue, thankfully. I mean, I know there are some bad actors still, but I feel like the interest for speedrunning has really died off, mostly due to all the negative stigma towards it, so it's not that much of an issue anymore. Besides that one time where Shepard claimed Extros and that other guy were cheating their base rise runs because he couldn't get on the leaderboards and made a big hit piece with zero evidence and then got proved he was wrong, that happened. But that's also part of my point with rise running. There's just too much negativity in the speedrunning scene now. Everyone's super backstabby and hostile for reasons that I don't really comprehend. Maybe people think that speedrunning will get them huge notoriety, which may have been the case before, but as Sabelle and some other runners holding world record runs, they barely get noticed. It's just the vocal minority that does, which is a shame to be honest. I think like before Iceborne there was a lot of positivity towards the speedrunning scene, and it was something that did get a good amount of attention and a way to like grow a YouTube channel, but that's long gone. Maybe because there's tons of cheating scandals, and then the mods that put some times out of reach of normies, or the constant strife of meta players only cramming attack skills in a set and for some reason casual players hate that. But the monster community in general does not like speedrunning anymore, which is still something that blows my mind. There's like no other game I can think of where people actively hate on the competitive scenes. It's super weird. And that's another reason why I just don't care for running anymore. I still do it occasionally, again, at least just to put what I preach into practice, common theme here, but it doesn't bring me any joy anymore. The only speedruns that get any attention is like TDS stuff, which is fine because I like co-op runs more than solo anyways, but people put them on like a super high pedestal for reasons I do not know. Their established viewer base is just already there, so whenever people see TDS stuff they automatically assume it's the best of the best and no one else gets any attention. There are plenty of better runners out there that get no views, and because of that they tend to stop trying and I really feel bad for them and the entire speedrunning scene in general. To no fault of TDS of course, they do put out good content, there's a lot of worse people out there. Back to Rise though, so besides the fact that nobody can decide on a rule set and everybody outside the circle hates running, Rise has other problems for runners that just make it a chore to do. First is that small monsters are still a plague, and often ruin runs because they never flee zones like previous games, they also just get in the way all the time. I mean I know small monsters were always a nuisance in older games, but only if you got close to them, not they just actively bum rushing you mid fight, all of them all at the same time, and then they draw the attention of the large monster which is again super annoying. 
There's a lot of other like little nitpicky issues as well with Rise that don't mean much, but putting it all together just adds that little extra frustration onto everything. Like monsters that are forced to zone at specific times that force turf wars or engagements that ruin runs. Or not being able to spawn from a specific camp, or wyvern riding in general, or running out of ammo, ledges, janky aerial hitboxes, not being able to stop limps, stuff like that. Like it's all very minor on their own, but added up it's just a huge headache and it just gets worse and worse the more you play. Rise in general also has very lackluster gameplay, at least in my eyes. Now, most weapons are boiled down to two aspects, a counter and your strongest single attack that you spam as much as possible. You don't really have to iframe dodge anything anymore, you don't have to worry about positioning since monsters track super hard and have huge AoEs, you pretty much just have to counter everything. There's no combos anymore, shields are useless, dodging is a joke, and in general the game, while looking very flashy, as it's designed to, has no depth of combat anymore. And I know a lot of people probably disagree and are going to hate me for saying that, but it's just really not where it used to be, it just doesn't feel as good. Like, I can think about other Monster Hunter games and then World and Rise, and I will go back to play For You and GU. Like, those are really solid games. I have no interest going back to play World, and I'm probably not coming back to play Rise once I'm done with it. Rise is just kind of boring. Monster patterns, save a few choice monsters, are all very predictable, and all monsters run like the same three or four attacks all the time, and it just gets kind of old. That or they're scripted 100% to do certain attacks at certain HP thresholds. Now especially when you're resetting hunt every time something goes wrong, you see the same patterns all the times and it just expedites how fast you get tired of this game. And this gets even worse when you fight HP sponges like the afflicted monsters and they're exhausted for half the fight and they're just standing there doing nothing. It's just boring. Rise feels like a watered down world, which it kind of is, and while Sunbreak did help a lot, I mean it's a huge step forward, Sunbreak is just, it's good. It's just more Rise though, which is why people have dropped off of it like really hard. Title Update 1 with the Armor Augment system was a step in the right direction for prolonging the life of the game, but now nobody wants to engage with the system because the RNG is too atrocious. In World, Safi and Kulv had RNG systems too, but at least it was much more forgiving and obtaining your min-max armor and weapons were actually an achievable goal then. Especially with all the deco farming quests they had, like you could get all the decorations you needed. Rise doesn't feel like that. The RNG grind is endless because there's a zero chance that you'll receive the best charms or augments, so you have better odds of winning the lottery like 10 times than getting a perfect charm or armor augment. So there just doesn't seem to be any motivation to keep playing, unlike World that have actually some obtainable carrot on a stick. Which definitely hasn't helped the speedrunning scene at all because people just can't start, the entry is just too great. And I gotta say, it's kinda lonely in the speedrunning scene right now. But anyway, that's all I have now regarding this Rise speedrunning. Uh, I do plan to continue my other feelings about Rise, but I figured this is a good place to stop. Thank you all for listening, and good luck out there, hunters.